Hello and welcome to Intertech's Oxygen Blast series for November 2012. Today's topic is PRISM and WPF development. My name is Tom Ginn. I'm a senior consultant here at Intertech. I've been developing with .NET since 2003 and I have experience with ASP.NET, Silverlight, and WPF. Today's agenda, we will show a brief demo application, introduce you to the main concepts of PRISM, set up PRISM, inspect the bootstrapping process in much more detail, and identify application types that can benefit from PRISM. Then we'll briefly discuss related frameworks and PRISM with Windows 8. All the slides and demo code and the recording of this presentation will be made available online at Intertech's website under free developer training uh, for this month under November-2012-oxyblast.aspx. This is the demo application that we're going to be putting together today. It's just a small application that has a couple of tabs, one that uh, identifies the application and might show some general information. Another one that has a tab that specifically shows customers and customer information. Basic PRISM concepts that we're going to be covering in this application are the shell, the region, the view and the view model, the module and the module catalog, the event aggregator, the controller, the service, and then the two most uh, interesting ones seem to cause people the most trouble, dependency injection container and related service locator, and then the bootstrapping, which will be covered uh, in much more detail in the demo. We'll cover all the other items they will be identified during the demo, but the basic meat of the demonstration is going to be going through the bootstrapping process. So what is a shell? Well, the shell is actually simply the main window of your application. It defines the overall layout of the user interface by defining one or more regions. And it is initialized during the bootstrapping process. For our demo app, our basic shell design is to outline a header region into which we can uh, put some content, the title of the application, maybe an image, something that's fairly static. And then we're going to have a body region into which we're going to place a tab control where we can insert one or more tabs to be able to um, add different features to our application. There's a third region here, a modal region, that um, will expand to encompass uh, all the viewable area to be able to show a, essentially a modal dialog. What is a region? A well, region is just a logical placeholder within the user interface where a view can be loaded and unloaded dynamically. These regions are managed in PRISM by what's called a region manager that tracks what views are loaded. Now, there are basically three types of controls that can act or contain regions. First one is a content control. It's a very simple control. The next one is items control in which every view that you add shows up as a separate item. And then there is the selector control, which is a, a base class for a lot of other controls. In this case, uh, the tab control, which we're going to be looking at today. Regions are identified in XAML by the region name uh, in an attached property. And here we have an example of that, of a content control called header content. And we have a, a reference to PRISM. Uh, and we are specifying the region manager, giving it a region name, header region. And when this application would be used, this particular content control would be identified as the header region. So that's how you identify it to PRISM. We'll see that in more detail in the demo. So what's a view that we're putting into those regions? It's part of the pattern known as MVVM uh, in general. It is basically just a user control that defines a specific UI feature. It is placed into the regions by the region manager through one of two approaches. Uh, one you may have heard of called view discovery, whereby you basically register the view with the region manager. And when the region is uh, detected, it goes and loads the view that is um, 
associated with it. The other approach is called view injection, whereby you programmatically tell the region manager, please load this view or please remove this view. Uh, it, you have much more control in that second approach. It allows your visual presentation to be developed independently, perhaps by an independent group, um, and certainly it promotes reuse. In the example here, we have a view that contains uh, current customers, and this is going to be placed uh, within a region, as we'll see in the demo. So what is a view model? A uh, view model, also part of the pattern known as MVVM, Model View View Model, um, which PRISM supports, uh, basically contains the presentation logic for a view. If you think of the view as only representing just the uh, basic uh, pieces of the application that you can see, the view model would be the logic behind it uh, containing commands uh, that are uh, triggered by the view, uh, containing data, which is data bound. It acts as a data context for one or more views that uh, can uh, share the data binding and interactions. And it acts to decouple the view uh, from the module and any business logic that might affect it. Here's a graphical representation of what we're talking about when we talk about MVVM, model view, view model. The view, which we're familiar with in the UI, is a user control. And through data binding and other types of interactions, such as commands, it interacts with the view model, which is just a class. The view model has uh, presentation logic in it. It um, can take data from the model, manipulate it, uh, change it so that it's um, made available through data binding to the view. There are various reasons for doing this, security, uh, just wanting to update the data and present it in different format, um, and various other reasons. The model itself um, contains business logic data and data access logic. What is a module? A well, module encapsulates functionality for the application. And here we're talking about the architecture of the actual application itself, not visually, but the application as far as how we uh, package up functionality and uh, separate it out from, uh, isolate it from other uh, types of functions. Modules are created by implementing the iModule interface from PRISM and implementing its one initialize method. Modules are registered with the module catalog and they can contain UI or non-UI features in, in some cases if you wish. It promotes flexibility and maintainability by uh, packaging up the functionality into a module and allowing PRISM to um, control that. We'll see that in more detail in the demo. Well, what is a module catalog that contains these modules? Uh, it helps in discovering, loading, and initializing modules and can be specified with code, which we're going to use today. It can be specified with either XAML or a config file, which is uh, a declarative way of specifying uh, the modules that are in the module catalog and disconnects you a little bit from um, having to rely on uh, references between the shell and the various modules. The most disconnected method is using a directory as a module catalog and um, that enables you to eliminate references between the shell and the various modules. You might ask why uh, someone might be interested in doing that um, other than just pursuing uh, a clean separation of um, the various pieces of the application. Uh, we actually have a client that uh, wants to distribute code by removing uh, modules when they do builds, depending on the customer that they're delivering the product to. And that provides a, a clean, easy way for them to do that during the um, process in which they're packaging up the application for uh, delivery to various types of customers. There's also the concept of the event aggregator. It provides a multicast publish and subscribe capability throughout the entire application. And what is beneficial with this is it allows you to communicate uh, between modules and between services and between um, uh, user controls or views across the whole application. So you don't have to um, wire up 
view or events that are going to bubble or going to tunnel uh, up and down the um, uh, WPF application, you can actually raise an event somewhere else in the application, multiple places. Uh, there can be subscribers to this event and they can react accordingly. If you look in the diagram here, we have two different publishers um, using the event aggregator to create these composite presentation events. These are all PRISM classes and they're being listened for by various subscribers. And again, these could be um, other module code, uh, these could be um, controllers, these could be uh, view models, uh, different interested parties. One of the other benefits of the event aggregator is they're very flexible payload for what you can uh, package up. You're not producing um, or subclassing an event args here. You can actually uh, just simply put um, various types of objects into uh, your message that you're passing. Thank <music> you.